Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Various news outlets are telling us that the Mueller report is finally on its way. We have no inside information about that, though we should say that apparently the White House believes it too. When Mueller's report does arrive, it will go first to the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General, and there's not much debate about what should happen after that. Democrats have demanded the release of the entire document. The president agrees with them. He said he'd like to see that report go public so that voters can assess it for themselves. Of course, we'll bring it all to you when that happens. But for now, we'd like to take just a second to put this entire sprawling story into some perspective. Our job on this show is to remember things, to create a record of what has happened in this country over the past few years and what has happened to it. Our grandchildren will want to know. If the left has its way, they will never see the details. It will all be whitewashed like so much else in our history has been. So let's recall for the record what the Robert Mueller investigation is all about, why we got a special counsel in the first place. The point was not to discover whether the president fudged deductions on his tax returns 30 years ago. It was not to find out whether he wanted to build another hotel in a foreign country. From its first day, the Mueller investigation was justified by a single question. Did Donald Trump collude with the Russian government to steal the 2016 presidential election? Did the president betray his country? For close to three years, Democrats have told us that, yes, he did do that. It's beyond the shadow of a doubt to me that if there was not collusion, there was at least the effort to collude. I think there's plenty of evidence of collusion or conspiracy in plain sight. There's more to be learned about it. I believe there's been collusion. It's starting to smell more and more uh, like collusion. We saw cold, hard evidence of the Trump campaign, indeed the Trump family, eagerly intending to collude, possibly, with Russia. These are not minor charges, and if you grew up in this country, it is hard to shrug them off. Now, Maxine Waters is irrelevant. She's a living sideshow. But Nancy Pelosi is not. She is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. She's third in line to the presidency. Adam Schiff is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. He's privy to the most highly classified information our government has. John Podesta, who you just saw, was the chief of staff in one White House. He was a senior advisor in another White House. Beto O'Rourke has raised more money than anyone running for president in 2020. These are not peripheral figures making these charges. They're the most serious people in the modern Democratic Party. And we took them seriously. We felt we had a duty to understand why they were calling the president of the United States a traitor. So we asked them. We interviewed a number of those people on this show. One of the most persistent accusers was Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. He's also a member of the House Intelligence Committee. If there was indeed evidence of collusion with Russia, Eric Swalwell would have seen it. Yet he never produced any, and we asked him repeatedly. Swalwell responded by accusing us of cutting him off on the air, of not letting him make his case. So finally, in frustration, we offered him a full half hour live on this show to tell us what the evidence was. If you have any evidence at all of collusion, any, and I don't care how small it is, I will give the floor to you, and I mean that, because I just, I, I want to wrap this up. I'm sure you do, too. So months later, Swalwell accepted our invitation. He came on the show, but he never produced a single piece of evidence that the Trump campaign colluded with anyone. Instead, he accused us of working for a foreign power. We'd asked Swalwell why the public couldn't see a memo related to the Russia investigation. Here's how he responded. In the case of today's memo, what specifically have I espoused that empowers threats to our country? You're, you're peddling the narrative that the Trump administration is putting out, which also is the Putin narrative, because they're retweeting this with their Russian bots. This, if you're so on the I'm same side as WikiLeaks Putin too. and Putin, I wonder, do you perceive if you're on the, the same side as WikiLeaks and Putin, you should take uh, a step back and wonder, whose bidding are you really doing? So for asking to see a government document that he himself had seen, Congressman Eric Swalwell suggested that we were treasonous. There's been an awful lot of talk like that over the past couple of years. It has completely changed Washington. People in this city are now afraid. They watch what they say. They don't send emails. They worry about being denounced. Demagogues like Swalwell have terrified them. From the beginning of this investigation, there has been virtually no honest public debate about what is happening or what has happened. Watch this exchange from the early days of the administration. Congressman Adam Schiff came on this show. We asked a simple, fact-based question about what we know and what we don't know. And it was, are we certain the Russian government hacked John Podesta's Gmail account? Here's how Adam Schiff responded. 
can you look right into the camera and say, I know for a fact the government of Vladimir Putin was behind the hacks of John Podesta's Absolutely. email? Absolutely. The government of Vladimir Putin was behind the hacks of our institution and the dumping of, of information. Of John Podesta's email. Not only in the of United John Podesta's States, email. but also in Europe. Okay, you're uh, not, you know what, you're dodging. And, and, and Tucker, <laughs> no, you, look and you say, are, I know they did. John Podesta's and, and emails, I, they hacked and those. And I think that uh, Ronald Reagan will be rolling oh, over Ronald his Reagan, grave fine. Ronald Reagan, and you're Reagan. carrying water for the Kremlin. I'm not which, carrying water which, for the Kremlin. You, you're you, making, you look, you're a sitting President member of Congress Lex, on the Intel uh, Committee, and you can't say I, they I, hacked. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to have to move your show to, to RT Russian television. So to this day, even the most basic, the most elemental questions about the claims in this Russia story remain unanswered. Meanwhile, we've upended our entire foreign policy. We put Americans in prison, all on the basis of charges nobody has been willing to prove. How do we know that, Congressman? Shut up, you're a Russian agent. The conspiracy hawks seem totally impervious to shame or reason. You couldn't debate them because they wouldn't engage. They just threw slurs. They felt no need to demonstrate that any of it was true. At what point do you draw the line and not accuse the president of the United States without any evidence of being an agent of Russia? Yeah, he, he's betrayed our country, and I don't, I don't say that lightly. I, I worked as a prosecutor for seven years, and I... But betraying the country, by the way, we want evidence before you yeah. say that, but you said an agent of Russia. Yeah, he, he works on their behalf. But as a prosecutor, yeah. that wouldn't be evidence in court. I mean, as a prosecutor, no, you evidence. know the difference yeah. between hard evidence and circumstantial evidence. I'm not hearing the evidence that he's an agent of Russia. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's pretty clear. It's almost hiding in plain sight. It wasn't just Swalwell and Schiff. Some of the most respected, supposedly sober figures in our society engaged in this behavior for years. They said things that were so reckless and so damaging to this country that it's almost hard to believe it was happening. Keep in mind as you watch this clip that not so long ago, John Brennan was the director of the CIA, the most powerful intelligence agency in the world. McClatchy's reporting right now that special counsel Robert Mueller has evidence that Trump's personal lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, secretly made a late summer trip to Prague during the 2016 presidential campaign. According to two sources familiar with the matter, confirmation of the trip would confirm or from part of the Steele dossier. Reports that uh, Mr. Cohen was in Prague, uh, despite his denials, repeated denials. Uh, there is more and more uh, indications that uh, there is something here uh, that is uh, far, far from being anything near a witch hunt. Michael Cohen was in Prague meeting with his Russian handlers. That's what Brennan just told us on cable television. Now, you'd think if anyone would know that fact, it would be the director of the CIA. The CIA knows all. Except perhaps on this one question, Michael Cohen himself might know more. Cohen was asked directly about it when he testified before Congress. Cohen had no reason to protect Donald Trump. He had many reasons to hurt him. Here's what Cohen said. You have been to Prague. I've never been to Prague. Never have. I've never been to the Czech Republic. You might bounce my time. At the same hearing, Cohen also told Congress that in all his years working as Donald Trump's personal attorney, one of the most intimate relationships in Donald Trump's life, he had never seen any evidence of collusion with Russia. Now, any fair person would consider that the beginning of the end of this story. Case closed. But it was too late. By that point, the Russia investigation had become such a ratings bonanza for the cable news channels that they couldn't slow down. They had no incentive to admit defeat. They had no incentive to acknowledge reality. So they continued, as they had since the inauguration, as if this story was entirely real. Night after night, they brought us an endless parade of screamers, buffoons, and half-wits, all claiming knowledge of the conspiracy. Here, to pick one among a thousand examples, is self-described intelligence expert Malcolm Nance delivering his analysis on MSNBC. When Benedict Arnold gave the plans to West Point to Major Andre, and they captured Major Andre, they did not have any real information linking those plans to Benedict Arnold, other than the fact that he was in his presence at one point during that day. But everyone knew it was treason when they caught the man and they hung him. So at some point, there is going to be a bridge of data here that is going to be unassailable. Thanks for the history lesson, Mr. Nance. They hung him. Let's hang this guy. And after a while, after years of this, voters started to agree. Thanks to propaganda like what you just saw, 53% of registered voters now believe the Trump campaign, quote, worked with Russia to influence the 2016 election. Among Democratic voters, fully 67% believe that Russia somehow rigged the vote tally. Nobody's ever explained how exactly the Russians might have done that, but of course they did it. Russia rigged the election. CNN says so every night. There need to be consequences for this. 
Once the Mueller report appears and it becomes incontrovertible that whatever his faults, Donald Trump did not collude with the Russians, the many people who have persistently claimed on the basis of no evidence that he did collude with the Russians ought to be punished. Not indicted or imprisoned, obviously, but thoroughly shamed and forced to apologize. If Republicans spent three full years falsely claiming that Barack Obama colluded with the government of Iran, would those who claim that ever work in media or politics again? That's a rhetorical question. Lying and recklessness should never be ignored. In 2003, the United States invaded Iraq on the premise that Saddam Hussein possessed massive stockpiles of chemical and biological weapons. Many of us believed it, but the claim was false. Thousands of Americans died. Trillions were wasted. Nobody was punished. To this day, Max Boot takes a paycheck from the Washington Post. Bill Kristol appears on MSNBC. John Bolton is this country's national security advisor. There were no consequences to their foolishness and their dishonesty, none. And so we started a series of eerily similar wars, all with entirely predictable results. Nobody learned anything. Will we learn anything from the Russia collusion hoax? Or will the same cast of liars and buffoons simply move on to the next scam? Climate change, the Green New Deal. We can't give you details, it's too important. Obey or else. That could easily happen. In fact, it will happen for certain, unless we remember exactly what we've just seen.